A huge storm is coming to the United States over the next few days, and this will bring the return of significant severe weather, including damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes from the Great Plains into the Ohio Valley and as well as the southeast. Additionally, the tropics are heating up with Tropical Storm Gabriel set to become a hurricane later today as it approaches Bermuda, and another tropical wave is right behind that one, and that could actually track closer to the United States as we get closer to the end of September. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today. And we're actually coming off of a pretty active day of showers and thunderstorms that stretch from the Midwest back into the Central Plains. A little low pressure system is actually spinning back up in North Dakota this morning. We actually had a tornado yesterday as well back over in Central Illinois. It was a very brief tornado, but we did end up having a tornado yesterday. And we may see more of those over the next few days as a potent low pressure system is set to develop right over the Rockies over the next 24 hours. And once it ejects over the Rockies, we're going to have a mix of warm and cold air across the Central Plains. And eventually, as that moves to the east, it's going to produce the potential for significant severe weather, which begins as early as tonight. But it's going to roll all the way, I think, through Wednesday or Thursday of this week as it moves across the Central and Southern Plains and even through the Mississippi River Valley tomorrow and Tuesday. And then by Wednesday and Thursday, it could cause some problems back along the east coast of the country. Now, over the next few days, a big storm is going to form in the Central Plains, and this will bring some problems. So let's talk more about that, beginning with our mid-level flow and our jet stream. This is what it looks like right now. We have a low-pressure system in the far northern plains, also a low-pressure system just off the coast of California. And overall, our jet stream is very weak right now, nothing too organized. However, as we go into Monday into Tuesday, look at this low-pressure system that's actually going to detach from our jet stream all the way back over in the Pacific Northwest. And that low-pressure system, as we go into late Monday into Tuesday, Tuesday, we'll move right over the Rockies. And I think as we go into Tuesday, we could actually get an organized risk of severe weather back over in parts of the Central and Southern Plains, even into the Ozarks. We could see a few tornadoes, damaging winds, and even hail out of this particular disturbance. As we go into Wednesday, this low pressure system will continue to track to the east. It's actually going to be pretty impressive because what this thing is going to do is continue to intensify just a little bit as it moves into the Ohio Valley, which is also going to help to intensify our low level jet which basically is our low-level winds, which can help to basically rotate supercells. So that's going to be a concern, I think, on Wednesday, assuming that this continues to intensify, which looks likely as of right now. So we have some problems on our hands when it comes to severe weather for at least Tuesday and Wednesday across the Central Plains all the way through the Ohio Valley. On Thursday, that low-pressure system will slowly move to the east. It will continue to bring plenty of rain across the Ohio Valley, the Northeast, and even back into Florida. And then eventually by Friday into Saturday, that will continue to basically just sit across the southeast and along the east coast. Meanwhile, we'll have a potential for a tropical storm, maybe even a hurricane, to form just behind where Tropical Storm Gabriel is right now, and that might actually make a close appearance to the United States. With that said, this is still around six to seven days from now, so things could definitely change. It could even go further west. It could also just stay completely out to sea. So no concern as of now, but it is an area that we are keeping an eye on. Nothing has formed yet, so things could definitely change. And we will go more in detail about the tropical in just a few minutes, but it is safe to say the weather is about to get very active very quickly in the United States for the foreseeable future. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days, and we'll begin with today, which is Sunday, and we have two marginal threats of severe weather in place, one of which goes from the Great Lakes all the way back towards Dallas-Fort Worth in North Texas, and another one back over in parts of the upper Midwest and the Northern Plains. The biggest concern for today will be isolated to scattered damaging winds. Some spotty hail is also a possibility, mainly from St. Louis towards Kansas City, also just south of Oklahoma City, all the way back through Abilene, Texas. There's also a very low chance, I would say, of an isolated tornado back over here in North Texas and also southern Oklahoma. The Storm Prediction Center at the time recording this forecast does not have a tornado risk outlined, but I wouldn't be surprised if we were to get a small 2% tornado risk for today. Now, tomorrow is a different story. We're going to start to see the risk of severe weather growing, and this will likely be one of several days where we do have at least a slightly more elevated risk of severe weather. On Monday, we're really watching the slight risk area, which is in Kansas, near Oklahoma City, and far western Oklahoma, and also in parts of the Texas Panhandle, where scattered severe weather is a possibility. We also have a large marginal threat from southern Wisconsin back towards Dallas-Fort Worth, and another marginal threat of severe weather, which extends from Tennessee all the way back into far western New York. Biggest concern for Monday will be damaging winds, also large hail. There is a low chance of a couple of tornadoes as well. That'll be mainly in far southern Kansas and northern 
Auburn and even parts of central Oklahoma, including Tulsa, Oklahoma City, all the way back towards Enid. And then as we go into Tuesday, the threat of severe weather does continue from the mid-Mississippi River Valley back into North Texas, where we do have a marginal threat of severe weather in place. The Storm Prediction Center has mentioned that a slight risk of severe weather may be needed in a future outlook, but it's going to depend basically on our line of storms in the morning. If that clears out fast enough, we actually could see supercells in the afternoon, which could lead to tornadoes. So that's something we'll be keeping an eye on on Tuesday. But generally speaking, wind and hail will be the primary hazards with a couple of tornadoes being a possibility. And let's talk more about the timing of severe weather beginning with today. We already have a lot of showers and even some thunderstorms out there this morning in Kansas and Oklahoma. Those will weaken as we go into the early afternoon. But by about four to five o'clock, we're going to see a new area of storms develop. There's going to be several clusters ongoing, especially in Missouri. But really, the area that I'll be keeping a very close eye on is going to be southern Oklahoma and north Texas, where there's a better chance of organized storms that will be producing damaging winds, large hail, and perhaps a brief tornado or two. By around 4 to 5 o'clock, those storms will continue to move over the Red River Valley, and then by 7 to 8 o'clock, those storms will be moving into the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and then by 9 to 10 o'clock, we'll have storms going through areas like St. Louis, with isolated damaging winds being a possibility, and then everything clears out as we go into Monday morning. And then back over in the Midwest in the Ohio Valley, storms will fire off around 3 to 4 o'clock this afternoon in western Ohio and also northern Illinois. Biggest concern out of these pop-up storms will be damaging winds. There could be some quarter-sized hail out of a few of these storms as well, especially near Chicago. And by 6 to 7 o'clock, most of the storms are going to be weakening, just mostly rain by the time we get closer to sunset. Not really expecting much in the way of severe weather overnight either, but there will still be plenty of rain out there. We could even see some localized flooding in areas like Illinois, Indiana, perhaps even into western Ohio and Michigan as we go into Monday. Now, as we go into Monday, the threat of severe weather will begin to increase. We're expecting a more scattered risk of severe weather. This is what it looks like by 6 o'clock. We'll have some supercells firing off, mainly across northern Kansas and southern Nebraska with damaging winds and large hail being the main concerns, maybe an isolated tornado or two. But really what's going to happen during the late evening and overnight hours will be the main event. We're expecting a line of thunderstorms to develop here across parts of central and western Kansas. And as we go into the overnight hours, this will likely bring the potential for at least scattered to numerous damaging winds, some large hail, and then maybe even a couple of tornadoes with any storms that fire off just out in front of that cluster. Now, this is going to be a late night threat. We're talking possibly overnight hour tornado risk in parts of Oklahoma. Luckily, the tornado risk right now is low, but it's definitely not low enough to completely blow it off, especially with this being an overnight risk. As we go into Tuesday morning, those storms will move into Arkansas and eastern Oklahoma. And then as we go into the afternoon, if that line of storms is able to move out fast enough, we could actually see the atmosphere destabilize again. And with our low level jet starting to crank even further, I do think that there will be a corridor that we could actually see a few tornadoes on Tuesday back over in parts of Arkansas and as well as Oklahoma. This is what it looks like by four to five o'clock. Storms will begin to fire off just to the south there of Tulsa back over near Fort Smith with the main concern initially being wind and hail, but a couple of tornadoes are definitely going to be in play if we get discrete supercells. And this again is assuming that that line of storms does not stabilize the atmosphere for the remainder of the afternoon. So if we get enough sunshine during the early mid afternoon, I do think storms are going to fire off again by seven to eight o'clock those storms will continue to push to the east mainly with a wind threat but i do think there will at least be a localized corridor for tornadoes on tuesday in eastern oklahoma and also western arkansas we could even see a couple of severe storms fire off back over in north texas so definitely keep an eye on that during the mid to late afternoon back over near dallas fort worth with large hail and a low tornado risk existing there as well and then as we go into wednesday this low pressure system will be sitting over missouri and arkansas and that'll lead to another risk of severe weather across the Ohio Valley on Wednesday. So as we go into Wednesday, this is a general idea of what it will look like. Plenty of showers and storms out there during the morning hours. By about 4 to 5 o'clock, we'll start to see storms firing off from Indiana all the way back over into Mississippi. There, These will be pretty scattered with damaging winds being the biggest concern, but I do think a couple of tornadoes will definitely be in play on Wednesday. And then by Wednesday evening, those storms will start to weaken. And then on Thursday, that low pressure system will be sitting in the far northern parts of the Ohio Valley with another round of isolated severe weather being on the table anywhere from New York all the way back through Alabama and Georgia. In our next forecast, we'll go way more detail about the timing of this event. Now, just for a broader picture of this entire storm system, it's going to intensify, as I mentioned before, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. By Friday and Saturday, it will continue to move along the East Coast with scattered showers and storms being a possibility through late Friday and early Saturday. And then as we go into next week, things may begin to quiet down again. It's a little too uncertain, though, what's exactly going to happen next week. But right now, the European model is hinting at a very intense high pressure system across the northern
northern tier of the country, which would suppress most of any severe weather that we would see anywhere in the Great Plains of the Midwest for all of next week. So if this were to happen, it looks very quiet. But as of now, it's too early to tell exactly what's going to happen then. At least for the time being, definitely be prepared for a pretty big storm system here over the next few days. Even if you don't see severe weather, there will be rain. There could even be some localized flooding. Winds will be picking up and there will be some cooler weather behind this. Now, the tropics are not super active for this time of the year, but we do have a tropical storm right now just southeast of Bermuda. That is Tropical Storm Gabriel. This will make a close appearance to Bermuda late tonight into early tomorrow. It'll become a hurricane very late today. More than likely not going to get any higher than a Category 1 hurricane. It will turn off to sea, so no impacts to the United States are expected. This tropical wave right behind it, though, might be something to keep an eye on as we go later into the work week. If it were to develop, it would probably develop somewhere over here, and then from there, it could literally go anywhere off to the north. It could even go as far west here as like the Carolinas, for example. So this is something we'll be keeping a close eye on, but overall, I'm not too concerned about it as of now. And we're also going to be watching the Central American Gyre as we get closer to the very end of September into the beginning of October. I have a sneaking suspicion that maybe something could try to develop over here. We actually had a hurricane last year, Hurricane Helene, that did something exactly like this. It was right around our Central American Gyre, came right off of that, and we had a low pressure system go right up into the Gulf that ended up becoming a very dangerous hurricane. So I'm not ruling out that something forms here. For right now, it's just an area that we're watching. Nothing imminent, but something to keep an eye on in about 10 days or so. And this is a closer view of Tropical Storm Gabriel this morning. Doesn't look like anything too crazy. It's honestly not that organized. There's been a decent amount of wind shear around it and dry air. However, there's lots of convection and it will continue to move to the north. It'll organize just a little bit more later today. And then eventually after tonight, it's going to start to turn right out to sea and move well to the east of the United States. And this is the official forecast for Tropical Storm Gabriel. It will make a close appearance to Bermuda as we go into late tonight and tomorrow as a hurricane. And then as we go into Tuesday and Wednesday, it will turn out to sea. However, if you're back over in the Azores Islands, that is where we are expecting at least some tropical storm impacts as we go into Thursday, as this tropical storm makes a very quick passage through that area. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. Our next forecast could be as early as tomorrow. If not, it'll be on Tuesday. We do have a few days of severe weather upcoming. There is a chance of a live stream tomorrow, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live. And we'll see you guys all again in the next video or live stream.